Hi, my name is Ben Seeley. I am a two-time World of Double Champion and also the highest ranked player in the USA currently. One of my goals is to help future Americans compete for the World Championship. And uh, so towards that end, I'm going to teach you the rules of Othello, also give you a few strategy tips, and also talk a bit about why Othello is such a uniquely enriching game to play. Othello only takes a minute to learn and a lifetime to master, but it will reward you for the rest of your life. Setting up the board is easy. Just flip it over and put the seven pegs into the holes. This will keep your board from sliding around while you play. When you're done, flip the board back over. Each disc has two sides. One is white and the other is black. Place two discs with the white side up and two with the black side up in the center of the board, like this. Take 28 discs and place them in the tray on one side of the board, and place the other 28 on the other side. All of the discs are identical, so it doesn't matter who gets which. One player will play using the black side of the disc, and the other player will play using the white sides of the disc. The player with black always moves first. The object of the game is to have the most discs face up on the board after the last move. One of the great things about Othello is that the lead can change lots of times, even on the last move. On each turn, there's only one type of move you can make. You place a disc with your color face up so that you trap one or more of your opponent's discs between your old disc and the new disc you are adding to the board. You will then get to flip over every one of your opponent's discs that's in a continuous straight line, horizontally, vertically, or diagonally between the disc you played and every other disc of your color. So, for example, if you play a disc here, you'll get to flip over all of the discs in between the disc you played and this disc. And, if you play a disc here, you get to flip over these discs and these discs. Remember, you can only flip over discs that are in a straight line. There are only a few more rules you'll need to know before you can get started. First, if you can't make a move which traps your opponent's disc, you lose your turn. This is called a pass, and your opponent gets to make more moves until you can make your own move. Also, if at any point you can make a move, you must play it. Next, when you flip over discs, you don't get to flip over discs which are trapped in between the discs you've just flipped and other discs you already had on the board. You only get to flip discs that are in a straight line between the disc you just played and a disc that was already on the board. You must flip over all of the discs that can be flipped, even if it's not to your advantage to do so. Once you've played a disc, it can't be moved. If you run out of discs but can still make a move, your opponent has to give you a disc. The game ends when neither you nor your opponent can play another move. Usually every space on the board is filled, but it's possible that there will be some empty spaces. Count up the number of discs with your color face up. The player with the most discs is the winner. Draws are rare, but do happen sometimes. If you've played a lot and you're playing against a beginner, here is something you can do to even things up a little bit. Set up the board so that the beginner starts with either one, two, three, or four discs on the corners, depending on how much of a boost you want to give to the beginner. And now, here are a few tips that I learned along the way to becoming a world champion. First, the best spaces on the board are the corners. Once you've played a piece in a corner, there's no way your opponent can ever flip it over again, so you get to keep it forever. And then if you get the edge spaces next to the corner, your corner protects those pieces permanently as well. In this way, you can keep building out from the corner. I also want to briefly tell you about the unique gifts Othello offers to everyone at every level of play. The first is that Othello is quite a unique game in how many ways there are to win. And some ways to win are literally the opposite of other ways to win. It helps those of us who play to become more mentally flexible, and it influences us to broaden our view on the many ways we can win at life. In my experience, Othello players are generally quite successful, and in quite a large variety of ways, and that's fun. Othello also rewards seeing the whole, and not just the parts, because in every Othello position, everything is connected, just like life. And Othello helps us to see that it doesn't matter how much we sacrifice in the short term, because we can still finish with a lot at the end. Playing Othello is one of the most fun ways we can experience these gifts for ourselves. Thanks for watching! I hope you enjoy playing Othello for years to come, and maybe you too can become world champion one day, or at least champion of your home, school, or office. For more information, or if you're interested in joining the U.S. Othello Association, please visit www.usothello.org.